Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a discovery of a very unusual galaxy that does seem to present a bit of a problem. It's a galaxy that's losing a lot of its mass, and it's a galaxy that's becoming what's known as a dead galaxy. But even though we always thought this happens because of central black hole activity in the middle, this here happens for some completely different reason. And it's something that we've never actually seen before. So let's discuss this idea in a little bit more detail, starting with the somewhat human idea of life and death. Because I think it's kind of difficult to imagine how a galaxy could die. Like, sometimes we talk about stars dying, when a star goes through its stages and eventually produces a supernova or a planetary nebula and basically leaves behind a white dwarf, a neutron star or a black hole, and sometimes scientists do refer to this as the stellar death. But how can a galaxy die? How could such a tremendously large object transform to the point where we would refer to it as inactive or in this case, dead? Well, first of all, when it comes to different galaxies, they obviously have different appearance. Like, for example, just based on the color itself, we can usually tell what's happening in this galaxy. If the galaxy is inactive, if nothing is happening there, it's normally going to look kind of like this. Here's a much better picture from NASA that kind of shows you a typical Milky Way-like galaxy on the left, and a typical disk galaxy that no longer is considered to be alive, a dead galaxy. That's the galaxy on the right. And what this is showing us is that, unlike the galaxy on the right, the galaxy on the left actually has quite a lot of star activity. A lot of new, very powerful, very energetic blue stars being created, a lot of cycling and recycling of material, and a lot and a lot of energy produced, which is more or less visible in various, very active regions around the galaxy itself. The regions we normally refer to as the stellar nurseries. But you're not actually going to find anything like this in the other galaxy. The other galaxy is going to be pretty much one solid color. More specifically, this kind of a yellowish orangey color. And that's because everything that's left in this galaxy are essentially these stars that can usually live for a very long time. So in this case, we're talking about, for example, red dwarfs, certain orange dwarfs, and certain other stars that normally have lifespans of billions of years. Eventually, this galaxy is actually going to become almost entirely orangey red. Because the only things that are going to be left in this galaxy are either red dwarfs, which normally have lifespans of trillions of years, or things like neutron stars, black holes, and white dwarfs, which are not as easily visible, but they're still going to produce certain types of radiation. And so this is essentially what we normally refer to as a dead galaxy, a galaxy that no longer produces anything. And today, scientists believe that this usually happens after an extremely active period, sometimes known as a quasar period, where essentially the central black hole becomes so extremely active and produces so much external pressure and so much stellar wind, or more specifically galactic wind, that it basically forces all of the material out of the galaxy. It pushes out everything and also creates really, really hot streams of gas, which prevent new stars from forming. And because of this, eventually most galaxies seem to kind of settle down and turn into these yellowy blobby objects. Some of them are more elliptical in shape and some of them are just regular disk galaxies, but their color would be different. But once in a while we discover an exception, an exception to the rule, an exception to our understanding. Something that actually also ends up transitioning our perspective on galaxies and how they develop. And this is just one such discovery. What the scientists now saw is something that they didn't really expect to see. They found a galaxy whose light took about 9 billion years to reach us, where it does seem to actually emit a lot of this gas without any central black hole involved. And this gas is being emitted as a kind of a tidal tail, usually a result of a massive collision between two galaxies or two really massive objects. Something that we've seen in many different examples in the night skies, like this one right here, the mice galaxies. But the thing is, normally, when these collisions happen and when these tidal effects are produced, we kind of expect almost the opposite. We expect a lot of the gas to accumulate in one of these galaxies, or possibly even both of these galaxies, and eventually result in what's known as a starburst galaxy. The best example of this would be the antenna galaxy you see right here. This is when suddenly there's a lot of new gas, and a lot of this gas is producing a lot of stars. And this happens for many millions and millions of years. And this is what we typically think happens when two galaxies collide. 
And actually, based on all of the observations of other galactic collisions from Hubble telescope, for example, we formed a pretty good understanding of what usually happens. There are these phases of collisions that happen in most galaxies. Here's an example of the first phase when the galaxies just basically approach each other. This here is the NGC 2207 and IC 2163. Then we have the second phase, which is the Mice galaxies, where the galaxies start to tidally influence each other and basically stretch each other quite dramatically. And in most cases, they do seem to become one galaxy afterwards. And in this case, it also produces a tidal tail that might actually create its own miniature galaxy. And by the way, the reason these galaxies are called Mice galaxy is really because of the tail. It does to some extent resemble a tail from a mouse. And lastly, the third phase is when all of this gas accumulates and starts to produce a lot of new stars, such as the galaxy right here, NGC 520, or the antenna galaxies that probably provide a much better example. And so, because of these observations from Hubble telescope, we've kind of formed our opinion on what usually happens when the galaxies collide. This is what we expect from the Andromeda and the Milky Way galaxy collision, for example. But in this case, what the discovery suggests is that something else happens as well. For some reason, the galaxy known as ID2299 is not doing that. And instead, it seems to be losing roughly around 10,000 masses of the sun every single year. Now, that's a lot of mass. That's a lot of gas that's just escaping this galaxy. Just to give you a comparison, that's about five to 6,000 times more mass than is currently used in the Milky Way galaxy to produce new stars. Actually, most galaxies out there usually use about two, maybe three, sometimes 10 masses of the sun to produce new stars. But this one is losing 10,000 masses of the sun. And that means that it's basically being shut down and will most likely turn into something that might resemble this galaxy right here. Essentially, it's going to become a yellowish or possibly even orangey shape that's most likely going to stay this way until another collision sometime in the future. Now, the question, of course, is what's making it lose all of this mass? It's clearly not the black hole in the middle, for example, because that's not what the scientists are seeing. As a matter of fact, it seems that this galaxy is currently losing about 46% of all of its gas. And that's not something a typical black hole can do so quickly. And unusually, this galaxy is also forming a lot of stars at the same time. So it's losing gas and some of this gas is forming new stars, creating a very peculiar object. And in this case, it seems to be using about hundreds of masses of the sun to produce new stars. Once again, a lot more than a typical galaxy. And based on these numbers, the current estimates suggest that in a few million years, the galaxy will shut down completely. It will have no fuel left. It will have no gas left to produce anything anymore. Now remember, this is a galaxy that's 9 billion years old. That means that if hypothetically you were to go there right now, it would most likely be this very dark orangey galaxy with no new stars and only ancient stars left orbiting in the region. And this of course means that all of these planets and all of these stars located here most likely existed in this region for billions of years and stayed that way without really anything interacting with them, without anything changing them. Which is of course something interesting to kind of imagine and to try to think about. But on the other hand, the much bigger and much more important scientific question here is what exactly happened in this galaxy? And if it was a galactic collision that resulted in this, why is it that we're not actually seeing this in other galaxies or have we been kind of overestimating certain things? For example, one implication from the study that you can find in the description below is in regards to maybe our overestimation of the activity of supermassive black holes. Maybe in some of the previous studies when the scientists thought that it was the black hole itself causing these emissions, in reality it could have also been some sort of a tidal tail or some sort of a major ejection of matter possibly caused by an interaction with another galaxy. Maybe not necessarily a collision, but a nearby interaction with something close to it. Although a really important side note here. This picture here, this is not an actual image. This galaxy is just too far away for us to see what's happening here. In other words, we have no idea what's here. We have no idea if there's a galaxy there that's sort of sucking all of this matter out. And we obviously will never be able to see this galaxy in more detail than that. It's just way too far away. But it is probably some sort of a galactic interaction. There's actually a lot of different interactions we've discovered in the last few decades, with some of the more peculiar names like galactic cannibalism, which is actually what you're looking at right here. This is when a bigger galaxy eats the smaller galaxy and only a mist of the smaller galaxy remains. 
But then we also have something known as galactic harassment, when one of the galaxies that's not as easily visible somehow interacts with the brighter galaxy and causes it to change shapes and to essentially transform into something else. And this is maybe what we're looking at here. Maybe this is exactly what's happening here as well, with a smaller but very very massive galaxy sort of stealing away a lot of the mass without being visible itself. Which also of course presents us with an interesting discovery that apparently some galaxies can basically kill other galaxies. You can almost call this a galactic murder. And that's a very very interesting discovery. But unfortunately, as of today, we only have a few minutes of observations coming from this galaxy and it will take many more months and many more years of observation and analysis to really discover what's happening here and to possibly find other similar galaxies somewhere out there. And so until then, unfortunately, there's really nothing else to add. The study is in the description, you can check it out and learn more about how all of this was discovered using the ALMA telescope and all of the other links I used are also in the description below as well. On that note, thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also consider supporting this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.